Hello Math 12 students. Here we are again at the home page in Canvas and I wanted to go through the syllabus with you just to make sure you've had a chance to see all of the important details that it includes. So in the syllabus I have some important dates first that the semester begins next Monday, August 23rd. Then Monday, September 6th, is the add drop refund deadline. That's the last day you can drop the class and nothing will show up on your transcript and you receive a refund. That's also the Labor Day holiday, so there'll be no class on that day, no Zoom class. And then Tuesday, November 2nd, is the deadline to withdraw and get a W on your transcript. If you don't want to get a letter grade, you have to withdraw before that date. I can't withdraw you after that date. Then Thursday, November 11th, is a holiday, the Veterans Day holiday. No work will be due on that day. And then Thursday, 1125, Friday, 1126, that's our Thanksgiving break. And again, there'll be no class and no work due. So the syllabus is made so that it's an accordion menu. So when you click on the triangle, it expands and you can see what's below. So the first thing I have is contact information and I will respond within 24 hours, usually much faster than that during the week and 48 hours over a weekend. So I have my college email address here. You can send a Canvas message using the Canvas inbox. You can call my home phone, it's a landline, so you'd have to leave a message and I'll call you back. Or you can use my Google Voice number to call or text. If you join the Remind app, we can easily text each other. I don't have your number and you don't have mine, you just have the Remind app. So from a computer, you click this link. From a phone, you text these characters to this phone number. And then please come to Zoom classes Monday or Wednesday at 9.30 or at noon. And then please come to my Zoom student hours Wednesday evenings from 6.30 to 8.30. And let's see, what do you need for the class? A textbook, a prerequisite, internet access, calculator, graph paper, a scanning app for your phone or access to a scanner, and lots of time to work on Math 12. So we don't have a physical textbook for this class. We'll be using software from a company called Newton Alta. So you can either buy your access code from the bookstore if you are required to because you have a financial aid book voucher. From the bookstore it's $51.36 plus tax. If you purchase it online from Newton by opening the first homework assignment in Canvas and coming to the payment screen and have credit card information ready, it's about $40 for the semester or you can choose an option of $10 per month but it will be for five months then August September October November December and if you need 14 days of free courtesy access you have to choose the full semester option so let me know if you have any questions about that the Newton Alta software is based on a free OpenStax College Algebra textbook. And here's the link to that free open source textbook. I also have it in the Canvas course in the files. The prerequisite for this class is intermediate algebra. If your algebra skills aren't strong or recent, you may want to enroll in Math 12 S, which is a six unit version of the course that offers additional support. They just do more review and more um, constructing the skills needed to do the next skill. We assume you have the prerequisite skills in the four unit version of the course, which this is. You also have the option to enroll in the previous course, which is Intermediate Algebra Math G. Counselors are not allowed to offer or recommend that option, but I can tell you about it. So let me know if you have any questions about which is the best choice for you. Then you have to have high speed internet. Um, CR College can help if you need a hotspot or a laptop computer. So there's a link here to student tech support. You need a basic scientific calculator, less than $20 one for this course. If you don't already have one, I highly recommend the Casio FX300 ES. Lots of students have told me that it makes their life so much better. Even if you have some other inexpensive calculator, this one is terrific and will take you through trigonometry. 
You will need graph paper to draw graphs for this class. I won't grade graphs unless they're on graph paper. So get some as soon as you can. We will start using it week four, mid-September. On the math department website, there's a free graph paper maker software if you want to print your own. And in fact, it also has the ability to print musical score paper if that would be of interest to you. Graph paper is available from the Sierra College Bookstore and I listed it as required so that you could use your financial aid book voucher to purchase it. A scanning app. You'll need a scanning app to submit all your written work in Canvas. There's several free options. If you already have one, it's okay to use that one. If you don't already have one, students have recommended to me Adobe Scan, Microsoft Office Lens, and Genius Scan. And if you have an iPhone, the notes feature that comes with the phone is all you'll need. So I do need you to scan your work. Photos converted to PDF don't work with my grading app. I do expect that you'll spend at least 12 hours per week working on this class. That's the average amount of time it takes the average student to earn an average grade in a four unit online course. The Newton homework software is adaptive. So this means it'll assign you as much homework as you need to master a topic. If you're answering questions successfully, you'll have fewer problems to do. And it will give you some guidance on, after you answer a couple of questions, it will give you an estimate of how long it will take you to finish that section of the homework. Most students find working on homework at least two hours a day, at least six days a week, is the best way to budget the time for the class. It works so much better to do small bites more frequently than letting it pile up. It just makes it harder to approach. If you need help, please don't hesitate. You can come to the Wednesday evening Zoom. I'll send an invitation each week, and I can be available to Zoom one-on-one -on -one at other times by appointment, just ask. And if you need to turn in a quiz after the until date, that's when it closes in Canvas, contact me and we'll work that out. Please assume I'm reasonable. Your peer tutor, Lynette, is available to help you. You can message her through Canvas or by clicking Peer Tutor Lynette, the button, and she'll have Zoom virtual office hours where she can help you individually or in small groups. The Algebra Support Center is available online via Zoom. There's student tutors there and instructional assistants and their schedule will be here at this link. And you click on the box that says connect with a tutor and wait to be admitted. So I'll show you how it looks. Right now, connect with a tutor has a line through it because they're not open. And they haven't updated their schedule yet for the fall semester. So they will be more open more hours than that shows. So when you check next week, it will be updated. So we have an algebra support center. Then we have the general math center. It's also available via Zoom at that same link, and those are more generalists, the Algebra Support Center or Algebra Specialists. So if they're both open, I would go to the Algebra Support Center, but the Math Center is open later evening hours, and so if it's the only one that's open, please get help there, they will help you. So the Tutor Center is not affiliated with the math department. It's a tutor center for every subject and it's located in the library, but right now they are doing Zoom sessions. So you can go to their page on the website and you see there's online tutoring center schedule, contact the online tutoring center, and you can schedule a one-on-one -on -one, one hour long session with an individual tutor once a week. And in fact, if you have um, accommodations, you might be able to have two sessions per week. The other thing you can do is if you have a friend that you wanna go with, the two of you can each make an appointment and both go, and so that's another way you can get two appointments for two people. So the course outcomes, every course at Sierra has a curriculum document that includes this information and we're obligated to teach to this document. And so I list the course outcomes here. They probably aren't very meaningful now, but by the end of the course, you should be able to read them, know what they mean, and be able to do all of the things that are listed here. So serious business is accommodations. If you need 
accommodations for any kind of disability, please let me know. I'm happy to work with you and figure out what accommodations will help you be successful. I need documentation from disabled students programs and services in order to give accommodations like extra work time. Um, I can help if you're unfamiliar with Sierra College's process. If in fact you have an IEP from high school, there is a process for seamlessly having that flow through to Sierra College. So please ask if there's anything we can do to help you. The Title IX policy is here. Um, the important thing to know about this is I am a mandated reporter. So if a student tells me about any kind of discrimination, sexual violence, harassment, anything related to Title IX, I am a mandated reporter. That means I must report that you told me something. If you have something you need help with and you don't want it formally reported to authorities, please just let me know you have something you need to report and I can get you connected with a confidential employee so you can discuss it without having it be reported until you decide to. So here are just some resources that we make available so students know about them. And please, if you need any kind of help, don't hesitate to get it. The college has so many resources. So though we're teaching and learning online, there is an attendance requirement. And each of your instructors, if you have more than one, may define attendance differently. So please make a note, in my class, you need to make progress in Newton at least every three days. So don't go more than three days without working on homework. Complete and submit your quizzes by their due dates. Contribute to each week's discussion board and make an entry in your journal each week. If you aren't going to be able to get your attendance work completed, please communicate with me about that. Here's kind of how it works. If you don't attend and don't communicate, I'll send you a message. Just ask what's going on and can I help? If I don't get a response, you may be dropped from the class for non-attendance. It's possible to be reinstated, no explanation required. So if you are dropped from the class but you want to continue, please communicate with me. It's very easy to get you reinstated. Academic honesty is expected. And there are penalties for academic dishonesty or cheating, and it can be as severe as a zero for the assignment and being reported to the Sierra College Discipline Officer. I am hoping we don't have to deal with this. So it's always my fervent hope that you'll just decide you want to learn and you want to learn by doing the work and not by cheating. Apps and internet websites that give answers aren't acceptable homework tools. They don't help you learn. All the work to support any answer you give me must be your original work. Anything else is considered plagiarism. So basically, plagiarism is presenting as your own work that's not your own. Copying from any source is not going to help you learn. So if I receive identical papers, they all receive a score of zero. You have an opportunity to redo it, so all is not lost, but I want to send a strong message that that's not acceptable. So please start by exploring all of the instructional materials included in Newton. There are um, documents you can read. There's the open source textbook. There are instructional videos included in Newton. If you aren't finding what you need there, you're welcome to use these free resources. Khan Academy, Math is Fun, Wolfram Alpha, or the Socratic app. Some tools that aren't acceptable resources are listed. This is not an exhaustive list. There are so many out there. But if you're not sure if a tool is acceptable or not, please check with me before using it. Because some of them just give you formulas to use with no explanation and don't ask you to have any understanding of where the formula came from. And that's not really very useful going forward in math. So here's the part that's important to a lot of people about your grade. So I'm really hoping you're here to learn and that the points will come because you're learning. That's always my goal. So 
there's a getting started module that's new for me this semester that I'm giving 4% of your grade to that module zero. It has a lot of things in it to help you get off to a good start. It's going to take some time to get started. So please set aside some time the week before classes start and the first week of classes to get everything set up and ready to be successful. Then your homework in Newton is 26.4% of your grade. And I really do expect you to spend at least 12 hours a week between the Newton homework and completing your Canvas assignments. There are 88 topics in the course. Those are required by that curriculum document. Each topic has one or more micro objectives within it. So the course is chopped up into 211 tiny bite-sized pieces. Each micro objective is a specific type of problem you need to learn how to do. If you complete all the topics on or before their due dates, that's 26.4% of your grade. At midnight of each due date, Newton will calculate what percentage of the objectives you've completed, and you'll get that percent of the three points. If you go back to topics later and complete them to 100%, your score will change to 100% in the Canvas gradebook. So I need to change this date here. You can do this till 11.59 p.m. And this will be on the last Sunday of the term, which I believe is December 14th. So there are mini quizzes in Newton. After each little homework topic, there's a mini quiz. They're brief, three or four questions. And they're mostly just so you can check your knowledge before you move on to the next topic. And they're scored in the same way as for the homework, where you can do them after the due date. And as long as you get them to 100%, you'll get the score of 100%. So then we have what I call shine quizzes. So happy it's not an exam. They are big quizzes but they're not as weighted as an exam. So there's 11 of them. Each one has 40 points. So all together, that's 44% of your grade. So each one is only 4% of your grade. Instead of big tests that are worth 10% of your grade or 15 or 20, which seem to only serve the purpose of making students really anxious. So any homework topics that have due dates before the shine quiz due date may be covered on the quiz. So I often loop back and bring things back into future quizzes that don't seem like everybody has mastered them yet, especially if it's a really important topic. So you'll do the quiz with paper and pencil showing all of your original work, and then you'll submit it to Canvas. In the assignment for the quiz, it has all the details about how to scan and submit the document. Use only the recommended materials, Newton, the instructor videos, and the other websites I mentioned to answer the questions. You'll have an opportunity to do quiz corrections to improve your score. Quizzes are due on the due date and can be turned in until the until date you see in Canvas. And if you need an extension on a quiz due date, just contact me before the due date. We'll work something out. Assume I'm reasonable and I don't need an explanation. If you need more time, I'll give you more time. Discussion board participation, that's 4.5% of your grade. And each week, there'll be a discussion board topic. You respond to the prompt and comment on at least two classmates' responses. So one point for your initial response, one point each for your two comments on classmates' responses. Then there'll be 28 what I call quick quizzes. These are very short, one or two problems maybe, and we work on them together in the Zoom sessions. So if you complete the quiz and turn it in, you get two of the three points. If you redo your work with my feedback incorporated and submit it again, you'll get the third point. So again, quizzes are due on the due date and can be turned in until the until date you see in Canvas. Then we have journals. 4.5% of your grade, and each week you'll respond to a prompt for a private journal post, or alternatively, you always have the option of just checking in and, and tell me how you're doing. So I'm the only one who will see it, and I reply to every journal entry. So did you notice there's no final exam? I have just decided after 20 years of teaching, all those giant exams seem to do is freak students out. And I don't feel like they serve the purpose of 
you showing me what you have learned. So I'm finding it works much better to do lots of smaller quizzes and students really are able then to show me what they've learned. So your grade in Canvas will always be your current grade. Please make sure and check scores and make sure they're entered correctly. And extra credit for attending peer tutoring sessions. So if you go visit Lynette in one of her peer tutor sessions, you get two points for the first session, then one point for every two sessions you attend after that. And those points get added to your total at the end of the semester. And also extra credit for coming to the Zoom student hours. So two points for coming the first time, then one point for each two sessions you attend after that. So here is a little chart where I've put all that grade information together. So that's the syllabus. Please let me know if you have any questions at all. I'm always so happy to answer student questions.